Let's make a title block. I am going to use a regular ACAD.DWD normal English template because we're going to be drawing it for an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. What this is going to do is just provide us a place to add information to our drawing, like our name and the date, the units, the scale. I'm going to just start with a rectangle, and we're going to draw a piece of paper. So from 0, 0 to 11, 8.5. We're just making an 8.5 by 11 size piece of paper here. Now, your printer won't be able to print all the way out to the edge. So we're going to use the offset command. I'm going to offset 0 0.3 inches. And I'm going to bring this rectangle in. Make sure you pull it in and not out. We're just creating an area that's the drawing area here. Now these rectangles are all, all the lines are connected. And I want to grab just the bottom line, not the entire rectangle. So I'm going to use the explode command, E-X-P-L-O-D. This is the opposite of join. And I'm going to explode this rectangle so that now each of these lines is individual. See how that bottom line is all by itself now and it's not attached to the rest of the rectangle? Now that he's not attached, I'll use the offset command. And this time I'm going to offset an entire inch. I'm going to grab this bottom line and pull them up an inch. Enter to exit or escape. Offset again. You could either hit enter or type in offset again. And I'm going to make my lines 0.375 inches tall. Grabbing the top line and moving it down. And that offset command is still alive and active until I exit out of it. Okay, so there I've got a couple lines at the bottom that I can write some text in. I'm going to go ahead and divide this up further using the line command with my snapping tools on. Remember our snapping tools are down here. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Okay, so I've got my snapping tools on, and then after I start up my line command, if I hold my cursor over here, I should be able to find the center point of the line. See, the cursor changes to that little triangle. Okay, so there's the center point of my line. And once I'm done with it, I can just hit Enter instead of clicking again. That'll stop that command. And I'm going to offset that center line by 3 inches. I'm going to grab it to this side 3 inches and then again to the other side 3 inches. Enter. I'm done with Offset. I'm now going to use the trim command. Select all will make every little intersection here a cutting plane where you can grab just pieces of it. So I'm going to go ahead and say enter to select all. And now I can erase these two lines. And this is where I could put like my little company logo or something. Okay, I'm done with my trim command. So I could hit escape to get out of that command. And now it's time to fill in these areas with some text. So what kind of information do you think we need in here? I'm going to use the mText command. That's multi-line text, but it has a couple more options in here that I like to use. Specify first corner. Now my snapping tools are still on, so I can grab this corner right here. I'm not going to grab the second corner yet. I'm going to use all of these little options in my square brackets here. So I can set my height. I could either type H or just click on height. And instead of 0.2, I'm going to bump that down a little bit to 0 0.1875. So there's the height of my text. Also, justify. So this stands for top left, top center, top right. I'm going to go with middle center. Just center my text on there. And you can set your line spacing, rotation, style. I'm just going to leave those as default. OK, so now after you have all of your styles set, now I'm going to define that lower right-hand corner of my box. OK, so click, left mouse click. And now I can type. I'll go ahead and put the drawing name in here. I have my cap lock on. K 
capital letters is just kind of default for drafting. It's Okay, so that's where you would put like chapter two, exercise three or something. Since these areas are all kind of the same size, I'm going to go ahead and just copy that text box. So click on my object, enter, specify base point. Your base point, that's just what point you're grabbing it from. So my lower left hand corner here, and now that's where I'm grabbing it from. And again, my snapping tools are on. So I can go ahead and copy him into these other areas. Now over here, I'm not going to copy him over here because that's a slightly different area. So I'll have to make a new text over there. Escape. Escape gets you out of that command. And I can double click on these guys to edit the text. So down here, maybe I want to set my base unit. So are we using inches or millimeters? Click outside, double click, and up here, Let's put your name up here. So I could type Jamie Turner, or you're just going to type your name in here. Your name. Okay, then down here, what other information? Probably put the class name in here, or your company name, whatever you're working for. And then these last two fields are a little bit smaller. I'm going to start up that mtex command again. So you remember how to do this? Specify first corner, height. Enter, justify, middle center, lower right hand corner, and here we can add the date. That's an important piece of information. And we can copy that text again. So grab it, grab the lower right hand corner, copy it. And the last piece of unit, we better put the scale on here. Okay. So that could be like one to one or one to two. Now we have everything set for our title block, except for it's in our model space instead of on our paper space. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our layouts. This is a piece of paper that and what it's going to look like coming out of your printer. Now the layouts have two things on here. They've got model space. So it's like a little window into what you just drew. That's down here at model space, or I can switch over here to paper space. And in paper space, that's where we would use, move our viewport around. Now, I don't want a viewport. I want it actually drawn onto the piece of paper. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this and delete that off of there. I also want to make sure I have the right size for a piece of paper. So I'm going to right click on layout. Come up here to Page Setup Manager and modify this page. What I want is a letter. You can see all of these different sizes. So here is ANSIA. Size A is just our regular 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. And we can set this to be either portrait or landscape. And you can set your printer type. So I'll use this ANSIA standard size piece of paper and say OK. And then close. I could even set my layout name if I wanted to. I'll double click on this and say ANSIA. We have an A size piece of paper. I might even add landscape to it. OK. Now what I want to do is copy that border and title block from my model space over to my paper space. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to zoom out, click, click. I've selected everything. And I'm going to right click on the border and copy this onto my clipboard. I'm going to copy it with a base point so I can make it in just the right spot. So. Specify base point. I'm going to grab just the origin here, 0, 0. So now I've got it on my clipboard. I'll go back here, and I can either type paste, or I can use um, control V. So paste. And see, I've got it attached to my base point. I can push down on my wheel button and move this around. It won't plug it down until I left click. So I'm going to line up the corners and then left click on my mouse. Okay, so there we go. There we have it 
on our landscape eight and a half by 11. Let's say we want a different page format though. So I'm gonna come over here to layout two, erase my viewport again, right click on layout two and go into page setup manager, modify layout two. And for this one, let's go ahead and try out one of these ANSIB formats, okay? So 11 by 17 instead of 11 by eight and a half. So ANSIB. I'll go ahead and use a landscape for this as well. Say, okay, so we're just gonna format this for a slightly larger piece of paper. And under layout two, I'm gonna go ahead and call this ANSIB landscape. Okay. Let's see if that title block is still on our clipboard. So I'm going to type paste. And sure enough, it is. This time, I'm going to line up the lower right-hand corner. So move him around and then left mouse click. And there he is in the corner. Now, I need to stretch him out to be the right size for this new piece of paper. So I'm going to use the stretch command. S-T-R-E-T-C-H, enter. It's very important how you select the objects for the stretch command. The first line you slice it through is gonna be what you stretch it. I also want to set my ortho snap on so that we can stretch them straight up or straight over. Okay, the top one, I'm gonna stretch him up. I'm gonna start over here in the gray area, left click, and where this line intersects my object, that's the chunk of line that's gonna be stretched. Okay, so I'm drawing my box from the right up to the left, and then click. And now I'm gonna hit enter. I've selected my object, specify base point. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the corner here, and now I can pull it straight up. Isn't that nice? Let's try that command again. So stretch, just S-E-R-E-T-C-H, enter. And I am going to come down here in the gray area, left mouse click, pull it up, and I'm going from the right to the left to select this. And this, this line here on the edge, that's a little chunk that we're gonna be stretching out. So there we go, hit enter to say we've now selected our objects and specify base point. So I'm gonna grab the corner as my base point and pull him straight out. I've got ortho snap on, so he'll go straight to the left. Enter. So now we have our border and our title block formatted for a new paper size. Okay, once we have this on our pieces of paper, we don't need it in our model space anymore. So I'm gonna come back to the model space, select everything and delete it out of there. It's still over here on my papers. So we're good to go. And while you're here, you might as well add those layers in here. Make sure you have a construction line layer and here. So we can make this construction line. I like to choose nice bright colors that will show up on the dark background. So maybe a green construction line. And then for my hidden line, so right click and rename layer. I'll make this my hidden line. Maybe I'll make that a nice yellow color. And remember my hidden line, that's going to have a different line type load the line types. There's a couple different hidden lines depending on how long you would like your dashes. I'm gonna grab this 0.5 hidden line, hidden two, click on it, say okay. So now this yellow layer is set to hidden and we have maybe a center line. And as you find yourself in need of different line types, you can always come back and add those later. So here's center line. What colors do we have left here? Maybe we want just a nice light blue for him. And there's a center line in here too. If we come down here, let's see. 
Let's use, see how the center is a long dash, short dash, long dash. So it's a little bit different than that hidden line. And I'm going to use a 0.5 on him as well. So here we go. Make sure to click it and then say OK. I'll just leave layer 4 as it is. So now we should have all of our different lines in here that we can use. Once you have everything set up for just starting to draw from scratch, what we're going to do is come over here and save this as a drawing template. So this is different than saving a DWG file. We are saving DWT, T for template. And this is going to show up in our start menu so we don't have to redefine all of these little customizations. It'll save the title block for us and our layers. So I'm going to go say save a template. Let me show you something. Look at this crazy file path. You won't find this if you start. But it will automatically put it into your start menu if you leave it at this, at this start path. Okay, so for your template, Give it some descriptive name. So I'll say 1304 with title block and layers. Okay, save it. And we can have description, normal English drawing template. And I can add on to that. Okay, so we have this save. Let me go over to the start menu. Under templates, Here's the template we just saved, okay, 1304 with title block and layers. So now when you start a new drawing, instead of just randomly starting a drawing, open your template file and open up that template that you just saved. And your new drawing, it'll have your title block in here for you. It'll have all of your layers already set up for you. And as you customize more and more things in your ribbon for your dimensions, you can just save those all into your template file and then you won't have to define them anymore. Okay, so that's your title blocks. And for everyone, you can just come in here, double click on the text and edit that for each new drawing that you do. Okay, that's it for that one.